All right, Shalom. I want to give all praises unto Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Rechakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Blessings to the elect of Yasha Allah, which consists of the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. And blessings and salutations to you, Akim, out there doing its truth across the four corners of the earth. Um, real quick lesson, um, just somewhat of an extension from my previous lesson. But I'm going to re, you know, title it more focusing on these dry bones and the nation of Israel. Um, my last lesson I did was over Revelations uh, 11 and 8, I believe it is, about their uh, the dead bodies lying in the, in that great city. So, pretty much going taking that verse and just splitting it up, pretty much. But um, reading this yesterday, you know, I was like, well, I'm gonna try to get to this. A little later, which I'm not going to go super duper in depth, just explaining it a little bit more. You know, I didn't want to um, when it comes, you know, to the stick of uh, Judah and the stick of Ephraim and things of that nature. So I'm actually going to start at verse 11 and then run it on down through the spirit. And Lord willing, this is edifying. All right. This is Ezekiel 37 and 11. It says, then he said unto me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel, proven that those dry bones that will receive life by what? By the spirit of prophecy. Okay. It's talking about the nation of Israel, Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Behold, they say our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our, uh, for our parts. And I remember a sign, you know, a bunch of camps used to have. I believe we might still have one, but it says... What does the so-called white man need to be saved from? As well as many of these other nations, a lot of these nations are actually living better than the people of the Lord. That's why Ezra spoke like, man, if we your people, why are we, you know, why are we, we look down and out and, you know, and yeah, we messed up in the past. So now this is the Lord starting the redemption. All right. The Lord is starting our redemption. Okay. Which is, we're starting with this chapter here, predominantly, you know, it's starting with us getting that heritage back, all right, us getting that power back, because when you go into those dead bodies, those dead bodies speak about, you know, it's spiritually and physically, okay, and the spiritual aspect is what, losing our heritage, losing our power, losing our, our statue, you, losing our position, okay, of being the, the the people being this having this earth, having dominion of this earth, all right, through Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Now that status is slowly coming back, you know. And um really it is it's faster than slowly, I would say, you know, it's starting, you know, it's and it's manifesting because we at the end of this thing. Okay. Which is all part of this as well. It says, therefore prophesy and say unto them, thus saith Yahweh, behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. There we have it once again. The dry bones didn't represent everybody because everybody didn't lose their heritage. It represents the Negroes, Latinos, and the Native Americans. We are the only people who was called by words and African Americans, Spicks, niggas, and savages, and all of these other names, we don't have a land to officially go back to. All right. Some of us, you know, speaking about the Southern American uh, tribes, I would say, of Southern American nations, you know, Latinos and things, um, Gad and Reuben lands were stole, the Negroes, whatever they had with Gad or coming over here, predominantly most of them was already in slavery, you know? All right. But even with them having going back to their other lands, you know, for the most part, it's still controlled by the so-called white man. All right. And that is not where they're originally from anyway. We're all originally from the land of Israel, but we can't just go back to the land of Israel. All right. And predominantly because prophecy has to play out, man. We were supposed to lose our lose everything and be where we at and start to gain it back so we can be grateful for it. OK, and understand how we're supposed to treat Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, man. All right. It says because uh, this is a relationship that we have. 
Okay, he he likened Israel as a comely and delicate woman. Okay, with the Lord being a groom, this is that marriage. This is that new Jerusalem coming down. This is all of that starting right now. We're getting to know each other. We're going on dates. All right, uh, we we're we're both playing our parts and playing our you know doing our duties. Okay, so this this marriage can happen, man. It says, uh, and uh, and shall put my spirit in you. And ye shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall ye know that I, Yahweh, have spoken it and performed it, said the Most High. Which, that's at the end of this, you know. It's not like we we get, we learn prophecy, we get, you know, we learn prophecy, get the spirit, then we get back in our land. No, there's still a series of events that has to happen. You know, hence Jacob's trouble, Okay. Hence the, the RFID chip coming out as the mark of the beast. All right. The devil has a short time, but he still got a little time to rule. Okay. But in his last stretch, okay, it's going to be our upcoming, our upbringing through Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Okay. We've already received the spirit and received prophecies and received the knowledge, received our heritage. All right. We received our heritage, who we who we know. I, it remind me of that movie, Jackie Chan, the whole movie. He going through like, who am I? You know, if you don't know who you are, you don't know whether you're coming or going, man. Anybody can. That's what happened with us. All right. We was tossed to and fro. All right. After this doctrine and that doctrine, you got us arguing with each other about being we Egypt. Uh, uh, we we from the land that we Egyptians and. Where we're Muslims and we're Buddhists and we're just all of these different, you know, we don't know who we are. But now, through Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, like he said, prophesy unto those bones and I will put my spirit in you and ye shall live. Now we're living because it's the spirit that quickened it. They need that spirit. You need that. It's not just, oh, I'm an Israelite. That's what's up. You, you have to have that spirit, man. That's what separates OK, Israel from the rest of the world as well, man, because we have the most high behind us. All right. It says, then the word of the Lord came un again unto me, saying, more so, uh, moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. Then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph the stick of Ephraim and for all the house of Israel, his compa his companions, because Judah was predominantly with Benjamin and Levi. All right. And then Joseph coming down to Ephraim was predominantly with the rest of the tribes going into second edge of the 13th chapter, where it speaks about them uh, coming over here. All right. Which I quoted it yesterday, but I'll get it. It's the second measure 14 and 40. It says those are the 10 tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea, the king, whom Shalomanassar, the king of Assyria, led away captive and he carried them over the waters. And so came they into another land that another land was these lands over here. This was not inhabited. It was visited. OK, Solomon used to send his navy over here. It was visited, but it wasn't inhabited and established. And this is where we're going to post up until those 10 tribes came over here. That prophecy could be fulfilled, man. All right. All of this deals with prophecy, man. That's why prophecy is very important, because for one, prophecy does not fail. So if you see the prophecy and if you have the prophecy and you see the prophecy, you'll know the prophecy. You'll know what to expect or what happened or, or, or why we're in the conditions we're in now, why the world is in the condition that it's in. All right. It helps you understand what's going on, man, because prophecy comes by what? That spirit. It comes by that knowledge, wisdom and understanding of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. It comes from the wisdom of him, not the wisdom of this world. All right. But they took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go further, uh, forth into a further country where never my, mankind dwelt. And that's what I was saying over here, that they might keep their statues, which they never kept in their own land, because after a while we started going off. 
and they entered into the Euphrates by the narrow places of the river for the Most High then showed signs for them and held still the flood till they were passed over because the route that they took had troubled water, so to speak. You know, it was it was wild waters. I forget exactly um, what it's called. But like it said, the Lord showed a sign and hell still the flood. You know, a flood is basically an abundance of water. So he he pretty much helped them get through those uh, troubling waters that they could pass over and get over here. For through that country, there was a great way to go, namely of a year and a half in the same region is called As uh, Arsereth. You know, so the route they took is not was the route that um that Solomon, you know, Solomon was sending because uh I'm gonna see if I can uh let me see if it if I can bring it up. Yeah. But I don't know. You can um uh, you can search it, you know. It's in there about Solomon how he sent um, his navy over and it would take them three years because it was a year and a half to get over here and then it was a year and a half to get back, you know. But um, ch -ch 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 -ch. let me get back into Ezekiel. All right, 37. And we are uh, verse 20. It says, And the sticks where whereon thou writest shall be in thine hand before thine eyes. Now, going into the, the let's lock it. Going into that stick, okay, is what? The Hebrew word atzazah, which is tree, wood, timber, stock, a plank, stalk, stick, gallows. So, that's where we get our sign from, you know, stating that um, Judah is the so-called Negroes, Benjamin, Levi, and, you know, so on and so forth. OK, because it allows us to know who we are, according to the scriptures, according to the spirit, man. Some accept it and some don't. But come on, man. <laughs> You know, you got people saying only so-called blacks are of the 12 tribes, like the Latinos and the natives act just, act just like us. You know, it's a reason why you can read out throughout history when they came over here, they was helping each other. They had to set the Negroes and the, and the natives against each other because together they was kicking ass, man. So what they did, they sold discord. They started putting a native a head native over the Negroes and a head Negro over the natives to cause that uh that friction, man. All right. Because shit, we we brothers, you know, we brothers. So we've been we've been helping each other. We know how each other roll. But Esau is the devil. He's the serpent. All right. So he knew what to do. But this plank. OK, this tree, this wood. This is why we have our signs out, man. OK. <clears throat> And it says, um, verse 21, and say unto them, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whether they be gone and will gather them on every side and bring them into their own country, uh, Salakia, their own land, you know. So we take them sticks, those two sticks, and we put them together, the southern and the northern kingdom, because it was split at a point in time with Jeroboam and Roboam, all right? But and that became with the northern and southern kingdom, the kingdom of Judah, the kingdom of Israel. OK, but now in these times, we're coming back because of prophecy, because of what this said. OK. Um, where? Let me see if I can find that one. Persig. None of my scriptures, but uh, I can't quote it, but it speaks about us being persecuted together, you know, 
Judah and Ephraim, both both sides, both kingdoms, northern and southern kingdom, which you can see throughout history. OK, you can see that throughout history. You can see the atrocities and that were done unto those sect of people, the Negroes, Latinos, and the Native Americans, and that are still being done today, okay? Considering us minorities and criminals and gangsters and thugs and so on and so forth, man, okay? The whole world look at us like we're nothing. That's because what? Ultimately, we lost our power, man, okay? They're going to look at Esau the same way once his power is taken from him by Yahweh, by Shem, Yahweh, Shai. They're going to be like, man, this this dude here, this the dude that was ruling over us, man. <clears throat> because all that power is going to be stripped. That's why he's he's fighting tooth and nail. <laughs> he's fighting tooth and nail to keep it, man. And he, he's rushing and doing things and he getting sloppy with it, you know, because he know that he got but a short time. So he's going to come down with what, as the scriptures say, great wrath, man. All right. Which is all part of prophecy. All of this is part of prophecy, man. OK, verse 22, it says, and I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel and one king shall be over, shall be king to them all and they shall be no more two nations. Neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. So, yes. And we're in the process of that now, man. We're in the process of all of us coming together. The the, the elect will be the first fruits of that. They're going to be the the. They're going to be the, the roots to that. OK, they're going to be the, the foundation to us coming back to being one nation and no longer being divided. And it's happening now. And that's why you have camps who, who are mixed with Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans. And you got camps who who have, you know, you have you have some brothers over here doing uh, doing uh on the highways in English, and then you have some brothers over here on the highways in, in, in uh, Spanish, man, okay, reaching out to our people, because we are the same people, and it's not by, where, where's the camp of white people, where's the camp of Arabian people, where's the camp of the East Indian people proclaiming to be is Israelites, nope, it's not for them, man, like he said, he, man, where did it go? Verse 14, and uh, and shall put my spirit in you and ye shall live. They can't receive that spirit and live, man. They can't live the way we live because they don't have they we got we got energizer or door cell batteries and they got fucking Dollar Tree batteries. Basically, you know, you use our power, they'll blow up <laughs> pretty much. I'm joking, but. They can't receive the power that we receive. That's why we operate the way that we do. It's not of us. All right. Verse 23, it says, neither shall they defile themselves anymore with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places wherein they have sinned and will cleanse them. So shall they be my people and I will be their power. And that's what it is. OK, that's what it is. We're the Lord is going to clean us up and we're going to have that new covenant to where we won't go off no more. So there will be no longer any detestable things or transgressions or serving idols, or, you know. And here goes that that king he's going to put over us and David, my servant, shall be king over them and they all shall have one shepherd and and shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statues and do them. I might as well just shut my mouth because the scriptures is speaking by itself, man. I'm going to just go ahead and read it out. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob, my servant, wherein thou, uh, wherein your fathers have dwelt. And they shall dwell therein, even they and their children and their children's children forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. And I will place uh, and I will place them and multiply them and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Yeah, I will be their power and they shall be my people and the heathens uh, and the heathen. Right. Shall know that I, Yahweh, do sanctify Israel, not all people, man. Israel, the heathen are going to know this when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore. So we're going to come from the bottom back to our rightful position, man, 
upon uh, of the earth. That's what we're coming into, man. Starting with those dry bones, receiving the, the flesh and the sinews and then receiving that spirit and then living. And then, you know, we were in we're, where we at. We're fighting through this thing. All through Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. He's the one to give us strength. All right. And then soon this this man will be over and done with and we'll be back where we was supposed to be, man. OK, we was on top. We had to fall so we can be grateful for what we had. All right. Hey, with that, I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Lord willing, you was edified and exhorted. Shalom.